Hello everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're in the world. I'm going to be doing just a, a little bit of an educational video. We're going to be talking about the uh, the squeeze. So um, you hear recently we've had a couple uh, members that have been asking questions on what is uh, what is a squeeze? How does that actually um, you know come about? And, and what uh, what does it mean when you enter a squeeze? You know what typically happens after that? So I'm going to talk about all of these things. You know I, this is an educational video. I'm not going to be doing um, any future analysis or anything along those lines. I'm just going to be focusing on um, on the chart at hand, and I'm going to be taking a look at a couple different scenarios here. Um, so let's go ahead and move on into the chart. So I'm here um, looking at Google and I'm going to choose Google as an example because this is an asset that we took a really really great play back in 2021 um, and so uh, you know what I want to look at is what happened going into 2021 um, you know why I took a trade that I took and uh, you know what were some of the um, some of the things that helped me make that decision and what I'm going to actually be focusing on is this price action right here. Um, and so what I have on my chart, just to sort of outline this a little bit, um, I have the TTM squeeze that's down here on the bottom. It's a free indicator. You don't have to pay anything for it. Um, and uh, it's just industry standard. It, there's, there's no difference in the settings. It's just the industry standard um, TTM squeeze indicator that's available on TradingView. So you can uh, add that to your chart really easily. Um, then you've got your price action up here. And what I have on my chart, let me just go ahead and zoom in here on this price action and just kind of talk about what I've got on my chart. Of course, I've got my candles, right? Um, I've got the price action for Google. A uh, couple other things I've got on here, the white background, that's going to be my uh, Bollinger Bands. And the red background, it's going to be my red, uh, sorry, the red background is uh, Keltner Channels. And the Keltner channels, uh, the way that I've got these set up is um, a little bit different because the TTM squeeze does make a modification to the default settings for the Keltner channels. So let's just talk about this. The Keltner channels, the changes that have been made here is the multiplier is set to one. The length is 20, right? So you've got a 20 period moving average and the multiplier is set to one. And then if you take a look at the Bollinger Bands, industry standard standard deviation is two the length is 20 so you've got a 20 period moving average on this as well um, and by the way if you're taking a look at the Bollinger Bands and you add the basis to your chart um, which is going to be just a moving average that's going to be your 20 period moving average nothing super special there um, really there's not anything special about any of these indicators. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what the Bollinger Band is made of. I'm not going to talk about what the Keltner channels are made of. I'm specifically talking only about the TTM squeeze. So let's rewind back to January of 2021 and what we saw in Google. And this is important to, you know, kind of understand how you might want to play, um, you know, something that's based off of uh, the TTM squeeze. So we had the price action on Google that was just moving sideways. We were inside of a range. There wasn't really a whole lot happening. But what you had, you had an opportunity to get positioned into something that could have been uh, pretty profitable. Again, the, the price action was moving sideways. And then what we ended up seeing, and this is down here, we ended up seeing that we actually had um, a squeeze that had formed. So what is the squeeze? All right, so with our bands that we have here, I'm gonna go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to see. What we have is, again, you've got your Bollinger Bands in white, you have your Keltner Channels in red, and when things get into a squeeze, what that means here is that the width of your Bollinger Bands is tighter than the width of the Keltner Channels. Okay, so sometimes what you'll hear people say is you're, get, you're in a squeeze when the Bollinger Band, the upper Bollinger Band, gets inside of the upper Keltner Channel. You can look at it that way, and there's nothing wrong with that. But a true squeeze is where the width of the Bollinger Bands are smaller than the width of your Keltner Channels. So you're going to basically take the, the high and the low you're going to find you know, the difference between the two, and you're gonna do the same thing with the Kelton channel, 
And if the Bollinger Band width is smaller than the Keltner Channel width, that's going to be what's going to define a squeeze. Now, what you also have, you have your momentum oscillator that's on here as well. So let me go ahead and clear this off. You have your momentum oscillator, and it's important to pay attention to how momentum is forming as it's entering the squeeze, and more importantly, how it's forming as it's exiting the squeeze. So the way that I would play something like this, looking at the price action, we're moving sideways, momentum dipped down a pretty significant way, all right? So we can take a look at this. Let me just zoom it in just a little bit more. You know, what you can see when you take a look at this, you saw that the momentum was going down and it started to come back up and then boom, right here you started to see a squeeze forming. So about that time, what I would be looking to do is getting into, um, you know, in the particular case that I did, I took a, like a call debit spread, or you can take a put credit spread, whatever you would like to do, I was expecting it to move to the upside because what was happening here, we saw the price action was moving up, right? See, the price action was moving up, then you started moving just sideways. And then once you got this squeeze, then you start to take a look at continuation, especially focusing on the fact that this momentum oscillator is moving upwards. So the fact of the matter is we got the squeeze indicator started ticking off around right here and the price was kind of moving up and down. And then eventually you're gonna be looking for that to be moving to the upside. What you're going to find is you're going to wanna to be positioned before it exits the squeeze because that's going to be the move that's going to be the move you're looking for and you don't want to wait because then you know it's not too late but what you're going to find is when you do finally get that squeeze that momentum up to the upside you're going to see that you're going to get a little more chop before it moves up some more that is very common for that to happen so you want to get positioned beforehand. You want to be in a properly risk managed position beforehand. Um, but then you're going to be taking a look for this to, you know, take a move to the upside. Now, the play that I took isn't going to make sense because Google has gone through a stock split. Um, but I was looking for this move to, you know, at least break up and make new highs. And, you know, when it happened, it only took two days for it to, you know, really pop up and out of here. And you can see it exited the squeeze, things looked great, and it continued to go even higher. But that's the idea, right? So looking at something that's inside of a squeeze, you should be anticipating a big move that's going to, you know, move out of it. And this, I'm looking at Google on a daily time frame, which means you should be planning for several days um, ahead of time for uh, for that play to eventually play out. Um, and the reason why I do like spreads is because I don't have to worry so much about decay when my thesis is still valid. So if I do get that move to the upside or the downside, if I'm looking for a downside play, I'm able to capture those profits when that explosive move occurs. So now let's go ahead and kind of move on into something else. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at Bitcoin here. And Bitcoin has gone through several um, several squeezes, right? And again, we just recently went through a squeeze not that long ago, right? And this would be all the way back here at the very beginning of January of 2023. Now we had a squeeze right here, right? So we entered the squeeze and then it was like, you know, one day it moved up. And again, like I mentioned, you get an explosive move and then it moves sideways some more. And then once it starts to exit the squeeze, you know, you get another explosive move, you know, typically. Now, of course, we fell. And then right around here, you know, I'm not going to, you know, kind of rehash too much of history, but this is around the time where I started to get more and more bullish on Bitcoin. And then we did enter a squeeze. And then what ended up happening is we were just on a slow rise and a slow rise as the momentum, let's go ahead and take a look at the momentum here. The momentum was doing the same thing. We were getting a slow rise on the price. We were getting a rise on the momentum. And then basically, you know, day after day after day after day, it was just green candle after green candle after green candle. It continued. So this is on a daily. Can this work in other time frames? Absolutely, it sure can. And it has happened in the past. I'm gonna to go to the weekly time frame. When are the, some of the times where Bitcoin has gone through a squeeze on the weekly? All right, well, here's a good example right here. 
you know, we've had this massive downward movement and then we had some sideways movement. So you would expect there to be a continuation move. And that's exactly what happened here. Whatever the reason may be, we were moving down on the weekly. So you would expect a downward move to occur on that squeeze. And that's really exactly what happened here. A big, big move. It's a 22% move to the downside. Now that move was really completed and then we just kind of moved sideways and the momentum, as you can see, started to move up and then we had an explosive move back up. That squeeze was completed. That move to the, to the downside is what exited the squeeze. It caused the volatility to cause the bands to expand. Therefore, you have, um, you know, you have the completion of that squeeze. You know, in in, in a most in more recent history, um, back in 2018, I guess I shouldn't say recent because 2018 was five years ago, roughly. Um, we were in a squeeze here on Bitcoin, and I remember vividly a lot of people were talking about this. Right, fact of the matter here is we were in a downward move, right, downward move. Then we moved sideways. We entered the squeeze right here. And we exited the squeeze right here, and then we had a big, massive plunge. And of course, we all know what happened here. Um, you know, we had a big downward move to exit that squeeze, and this is on a weekly time frame. So you would expect that the the time it's going to take for this to play out is going to be a little bit longer. And that's again exactly what happened here, right? And so I'm on log scale. It's going to look a lot better if I take a look at this on on your arithmetic scale, but. At the end of the day, we were in this tight squeeze and then we had our explosive move to the downside, but it took time. Another example right here was in 2019, April of 2019, we were in a squeeze for a couple weeks. And this is sort of a remnant of uh, what we had for the price action right here where we had the explosive move to the downside. Frequently, what you'll see is if you have an explosive move to come back, it's going to re-enter that squeeze. And that, again, is an indicator that you're going to have a continuation of whatever move it took. Because if you had a squeeze that exited here and it moved down, and then you see a price action move back up and it enters the squeeze again, you better be ready for that move to continue moving to the upside. Because whatever explosive move that you had in one direction, whatever move is the you know, the opposite reaction going back up in and recreating the squeeze, you're going to see a continuation move and it's going to be pretty significant. And that's really exactly what happened from here, because what we saw is a move here from about 5150 all the way up to about 13,800. That was a move of about 167%. Now that took several weeks because this is now what I'm looking at is a, it's a squeeze on the weekly time frame. But again, what you're looking for, you're looking for the Bollinger Bands that are going to be tighter than the Keltner channels. And in some cases, you're going to be looking for the upper Bollinger Band intruding inside of the upper Keltner channel. But really what you're looking for is the width of that Bollinger Band to be tighter than the width of the Keltner channel. Um, and again, it's going to look differently whether you're on log scale, on arithmetic scale. Um, but if you actually dig in and take a look at the code for the TTM squeeze, it's actually looking at the width and the difference of the widths to make a determination on whether or not one is wider than the other. Um, you know, which is again all determined based off of volatility. When you have a um, a, a lighter amount of volatility, that's when you're going to start to see assets um, start to tighten and you're going to see pressure that is going to be building. And at some point, you're going to get that explosive move going either to the upside or to the downside. And again, use the momentum oscillator as sort of a helping hand to make a determination on what is going to be happening. Um, you know, again, to see what is going to happen as it expands out of that squeeze. Um, this is not the same thing as, say, for instance, um, you know, a short squeeze or a long squeeze. This is a different type of squeeze that is a, more of a technical um, squeeze based off of the Bollinger Bands and the Keltner channels. Um, so just really quickly, wanted to spend 15 minutes to talk a little bit about what this squeeze indicator is, um, how it works, what causes the squeeze, 
and you know how you can potentially use it to your benefit um, you know moving forward if that if that's what you so choose to do all right hopefully this helped you in uh, you know in any way shape or form and if it did you know we do always appreciate the likes and subscribing to our channel um, we're always looking to uh, to bring in new members to our discord server as well um, you can find the uh, the link right here on the screen to access our discord um, but you can find all kinds of other membership options on bitdoctor.org um, and last but not least wherever you are in the world i hope you're having a good day a good night and a good evening take care everybody